a Hopi nation which we represent our people who have in that southwest area long before Columbus ever wandered out over the ocean, got lost, and finally landed up in our area and called us Indians. He thought he landed around close to Indian country in East India. There were villages already setting up in northern part of what is now called Arizona on three mesas. And there the elders of the people set up their own form of government based on religious principles. Here they met the great spirit whom the Hopi called Masawa. And he in turn gave the people instructions as how to live in this new land and life. How to take care of plant, animal, birds, and the whole living things on this earth. And we held that la land and life in a good state. There are clear rivers, green valleys, trees, animals, birds, everything was in good order. Our white brothers separate from us at the very beginning of uh, life and he went to this continent somewhere and bring about destructions of our land so much that there's pollution of land, air, rivers and everything taking place all over that land today. And someday he will come back to us and he's supposed to help us to take care of the land in a better way with what he invent. The Hopi people have never made any treaty with any nation that came upon our continent, not with, even with the United States government. So we still consider ourselves as a Hopi sovereign nation or Hopi independent nation and we who are here today represent them in such a uh, way and we hope that we may talk with some of the United Nations people and other nations in this country while we're here for the next two weeks. So Thank you, you very much. Uh, I will repeat again that brother Robert, sister Miriam had said that uh, they were very happy to see many of you let your hair grow. That's in our property too. Sometime we would realize that we have taken the wrong path and if we realize that we are not taking the right path, the people would let their hair grow. But the earth has been torn to pieces and she's bleeding. How can we cure our mother? Only to uh, follow the spiritual path so that the great spirit will cure our mother earth. I'm very, very happy to say that we have shown something here. Whatever we planted here may grow and bear fruit that we may harvest, some, uh, harvest a good crop at the end as a spiritual crop. Let us not forget the teachings of the Great Spirit. Let us, uh, let us all follow him so that we may not destroy ourselves. We want to deliver ourselves from destructions. I look upon all you people being holding some religious order that I would say that you are all my children. I pray for any, all of the people all over the world so that they may have long lives and happy lives and have abundance of food for all so that we may be live in happily. So, so I'll, like I'll, re I'll repeat again that I'm very happy that you are here with us today and I would again say that always adhere to the things of a great spirit because it's the only remedy to our cause. Since we are here, we are very, very much pleased that we have met you here, uh, the faces of you people who have never been across here before, and we now we have come. Uh, this has been prophesied too, that, that we will come some, we will come together someday in this manner, in foreign countries, so that we can solve our problems together, so, so that we may not destroy ourselves. I do not feel strange to you people. 
and so do not feel strange toward me. You are all my children or my brothers and sisters. Thank you. These two stone tablets were given in, in the hands of two brothers who had the same mother, but one of them had a very light complexion. And we for, for to, referred to that young person or uh, older brother, a white brother, because his skin is white, whiter than the other one, who has a color of Mother Earth. It's, it's our native people have that color that was to, to carry this knowledge, to take hold of it and keep it. So there was a separation made. The, the one with a lighter complexion, a white brother, was instructed to go east along the edges of land to, to another land to take care of it and to use it and to develop things, to record things, to invent things, which he had done before, so that after he got so far, then he was to come back here to look for his younger brother who was left here to take care of this land in spiritual way with songs and prayer, ritual, fasting, meditation. He was to take care of this continent here in that fashion. So he required brothers to come with his invention to help him when, when they come together the material and spiritual were joined and together they're supposed to take care of this land in a real good way in accordance with the great spirit instruction. But there is a danger, he said, because he gave us both sacred symbols, circle, there's no end to this uh, circle, just like there's no end to this life if we follow that. So each one was receiving that same symbol. Our white brother went east and then he came back but if he start change that and bring another symbol, we know that he start changing things. He's going to do things in his own way. So those two symbols were known to us. So that when he comes, we place everything on this life to follow. This represents village life, religious life, and everyday life of our people to follow. There was no road there yet. But later, our white brother came. And he did bring inventions, he said. Now I'm just going to go through this quickly as possible. The inventions he will bring, one of the elders who, who was uh, the one that called this meeting was a uh, Kachina society leader. He was about 80 or 90 year old man, and he said, after others have told, at uh, four days, at the end he said, my grandfather used to tell me, that I may able to maybe get to see some of the inventions that our white brother will bring. When he comes, he's going to bring a carriage that will be pulled by animals, carrying people across our land. He said, I've seen that. That's a wagon, he said. Pretty soon that's going to run by itself, carrying people across our land. And he said, that's automobile. And then pretty soon there are going to be a road in every direction from our mesas. You can see all kind of trails every direction. They have no word for pavement. In, in. So he said, one of these days you go down one of those trails, you're going to see water, water in front of you. Because you know in hot summer day you actually see a mirage or water in front of you. That's the way they describe there be paved road all, of, all over the land. And, uh, Pretty soon we're going to want have we want have those things also. So some of our people start to go that way because we we warn us not to go too far with that. We can have them but not just let this go and go up that way. So he said when when that happened then there will be a uh, time someone invent something that we we will be talking to each other through cobweb. And he shook his head and said, I don't understand what that meant. And then, then some young fellow told him that that's a telephone line. You know, you look up in the sky, it looks like a uh, cobwebs up there. We're talking to each other. And pretty soon, uh, there'll be a time we close everything in a room, talking, doors and windows. But way over the mountain someplace, them somewhere be hearing us talking. And I couldn't understand that, he said. Then the, again, and this one fellow told him that that must be radio or TV. And then uh, these uh, periods, inventions, will show 
where we are in this life as we go along. Then he said, there'll be road in the sky. And he shook his head. He said, I don't, how, I don't see how anybody could build a road way up in the sky where people would be traveling. But they found out that it was airplane that'd be having a road up there, pe carrying people up there. So then he said, when that is fulfilled, there can be trouble on this earth because man has gone too far going that way. They're going to start fighting one another. They're going to be quarreling. They're going to be uh, trouble all over. Young people will not uh, respect for the elders or elders will just neglect their children and go all out for this and that. They're just not going to have any more respect of things around that nature that's provided because we want to have those things. And they're going to be like that, and pretty soon one of these that has been commissioned by the Great Spirit over here will rise up and shake the world's real heart. A warning to us. Now, you people are not following the instructions that the Great Spirit told, told you to follow. And this is what's going to happen. Many life and property will be destroyed there. There will be world-shaking events take place. Then it stopped for a while. Then we go on, then another came along, more advanced things will be invented. This time they said they're going to be, start messing around with moon and stars. And they must know that someday somebody's going to get to the moon. They said uh, that if you ever get to the moon, don't bring anything down from the earth, from the moon down to earth. Because once you do that, then you are interfering with the balance of universe, nature, and everything going to be disrupted. And things happen on earth you cannot control anymore even though you have all knowledge and scientific things you can't when earthquakes start shaking you're going to be helpless when a great wind become destructive you're going to be helpless this is what's going to happen here so but then we want many things there because there are other things going to be developed there we began to see money many money system develop we see the uh, new gadgets of all kinds are being developed then everybody wants to have a new car every year we all work and strive and we don't care how we get it so we we fight and we struggle and we do all that and we forget the spiritual things we forget ourselves how we connected to plate the grass trees animals clouds we mm -hmm. forget all those things and we we struggle and struggle and trying to get all this and that then there are this is the place where someone would invent what he termed gourd full of ashes. It's going to be, he went like that, and it's going to be so small, but it's going to be so powerful that if ever man, any time mankind ever allowed that to fall on the earth someplace, it is going to be so hot that it's going to boil oceans, rivers, it's going to burn everything to ashes. And he described what will happen when that ever took place. Out of it, much sickness and things will develop that man will not be able to cure some of those things. That is that it's going to happen here between these two. Then there will be also another world second event take place that another one stands up and said, now you people are not following the destruction. You're going too far away. Start destroying things. So they warn us again. And this term, this third one's coming up with much greater. This time there'll be someone who's going to start farther away messing around with moon and stars. And the last thing he would invent would be a huge house that would be floating way up in the sky someplace, carrying people and things. When that is fulfilled, this old man said, then you better start learning how to live on, on this earth, how to survive, because the earthquake might hit certain areas very strong something they knock everything down or there may be a severe famine come along or be a flood or a storm lightning everything starts hitting us very strongly because uh, nature is going to be acting very strongly here so this is where he said we're in there because by that time one of our own native people will join them to the, the, the others and tell their own people, forget your language, forget your ways, forget your songs, you come and follow us. Look, we got money, we got all this material gain, 
all these things and new TV, new cars, new this and that. So just forget about come this way and they will also try to influence many of our own people to go that way. But then they will advance in scientific things, inventions, but they're going to destroy themselves with what they invented if they're not careful. So now we're right in the spirit, they said. We are either go all out for this kind of thing and destroy ourselves or come back, search our spiritual instructions, search ourselves within us, something that should link us together. Because now we know that we are all alive. We are all linked together. Talk about God, talk about great spirit, but no one really see him yet. But we know there's something that keep us alive. And that's why we call it great spirit, the spirit within us, linked together with you and grass and animal, birds, everything. It's this air that we're all breathing right now. We're all linked together with that. So we are alive. We are living with this grass, animal, birds. Everything, we are all together because we are breathing this. Now, if we pollute this air too much, then we're also destroying ourselves with what we invented. Because they said we, we, we may come to that at this period when the sun will rise, it's blood red someday, sets blood red someday, and I've seen that. It's already polluted so much in the east and west coast that when the sun comes out, you can see it real bright red coming out, sun, blood red. So this is what uh, they said, the third, second one will shake us up real hard. Now we are coming to this last one, what we, we say is a purification of this continent here. Because this is where the Hopi say that within this spiritual center, which would cover all this four-corner state area, Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, and Utah. For some reason, I don't know whether the United States government know this or not, but they make that states come together in that very area where we refer to as a sacred area. Now, we have that. Uh, drawing on a shield, the Kachina, whichever picked that up, they were to protect that area every, with every way they can, because that is the very heart of our Mother Earth, the spirit of our uh, people, planted in there, and we must not disturb it in any way. We can go all around it, but if we go too far in this, uh, then we destroy a lot of things in ourselves also. So, this is the time where we're facing, according to Hopi, that we are now coming. A lot of us are going up to a material path. We, we're just forgetting the spiritual thing. We disturb nature so much. They're fighting and warring and they're quarreling and people with the same language. And they were testing out a lot of things in our own way because we got so, so smart, intelligent now that we're going to be start making people ourselves now found in, in record there, there are some people now trying to make people in test tubes and they're eating pills now. I think we're going better ourselves. All those things are going to take place at this time. It, it's known to the hope. And then also the life would be uh, down to a level that was just before the other destruction came. There'll be restlessness all over. There'll be people here and there, running here and there, because we can get to here and there real fast now. And we just won't sit still anymore. We want to jump, we want to uh, do a lot of things, you know, unnecessary things, because we have all these things in our hand now. And we're going to have power in our hand that eventually, if we misuse it or do it in a wrong manner or accidentally let go of it, then everything will go down or destroy it, because this is what it meant. So we are looking for the spiritual people in these four areas. In the last 15, 20 years, we find few elders still holding on, different native people. Their uh, sacred sun dances are reviving now, and ghost dances are reviving. And there are sacred ceremonies in longhouses in New York. Six Nations Air Corps Confederacy are developing again, reviving and those in the West Coast are developing. All over this continent, Native people are now coming together to, to hold on to this because that is our instruction. Now, our White Brothers has come and is about to lead us into that way. 
So we are now coming back to, to our white brothers with this message, with this knowledge, because we are facing this last day of purification day. Now I found it able to go on in this land. And this is what happened. And so we know that something has gone wrong so that all across the land our people are start destroying our native people's land and life and religion. Now that's coming to this period which is powerful. It would be the last place whether the, uh, the white brother realize it someday and start correcting and stopping and changing something because sooner or later pure force is going to come and bring about full cleansing of this earth because if you can't do it even you talk about religious good moral principles good government or principles yet you can't stop these things then these pure force will have to do it with power and might because great spirit give them all the power to develop now then whoever comes out, he will meet the Great Spirit again, because here it, I find in Bible and other says that I'm the first here. I have taken care of this land, I let you take care of it. I give instruction, I go away for a while, I let you go on your way. Now if some of you may follow it, some of you may turn away, but after this purification, whoever comes out, then I come and meet him again, and this time this will be a long life again, renewing everything. All living people, no matter what race, will come together as one people, like it was to start from. There will be no more fighting over religion or or land will be open, so that you will live out there without money system. You will not be required to pay taxes. You cannot uh, uh, grab everything uh, by somebody. Uh, like now you have certain area for yourself and to let everybody uh, stay away. We deny one another everything. And we be like fruit trees out there, produce things. Because each one of us has a gift to give freely. Now after this purification, if I invent something, you can take it and use it. And if you invent something, I can take it. I don't have to struggle to pay and pay to get it. It'll be free. So that's the way it's going to be from there on. And they may even speak one language again. But whose language is a question there. Is that because after the Great Spirit is with us, there'll be a new life we laid out by the purifier. Purifiers will cleanse this land. And whoever stood fast to this, even there may be one person remain up to this point through that person's faith and courage or those that come to help him to keep it that that many people will be safe to come out and meet the great spirit so this great spirit purifier and the one that's kept the faith will lay out a new plan for all the rest of the people that survive from there on there will be a peace real peace from there on so after many years of uh, knowledge along this line about six or seven years later after they told me about these things, I was wondering about who are those people that's going to purify this land? How are they going to do it? So they explained to me, we have a gourd rattle that we still use in our ceremony. And that gourd rattle, rattle rep represents a world. And one side, this figure is on the drawing. And another one is on this side. There'll be a gold rattle. We still use them. The one old man told me, take a look. Whoever has this symbol in this world is going to shake us up two times. And it just came to me quickly. And I wondered, what nation ever shown something similar to this one? Because they will be very intelligent people. They're going to produce many inventions of all time. They're going to be so powerful that they're going to use that to shake us up real hard. And they're going to almost destroy themselves. But later out of it, a new generation is going to rise. This time they will know what to do in the right manner for the right purpose. 
Then around it, there's a sun symbol. Those people are very intelligent people that have that symbol. They have produced many things, invent many things. And they become powerful. And they also shake us up two times, I mean, second time, with the help of another. These two have shook us up two times real hard, warning us. And they almost destroy themselves. But out of it, a new generation is coming, stronger, much better equipment, everything, powerful things going to be developed by these two people. Then the third one that will finally bring about purification of this land in this continent would be a man with red cap, red hat, or red cloak. Now, we do not know who that nation is or what people, but they say those people will have a large population and they will also have much scientific inventions of all type, very powerful nation going to be. So once he start moving, these others two have jo will join him with all their power and might. The three of them are going to come here quickly together and nothing can stop them. This time they're going to come right here. They say even they're going to come here so fast they come here for breakfast. <laughs> now this is nice clear day today, calm, everything, nice. Tomorrow morning maybe we get up at breakfast time then the whole sky will be darkened. The old man said, I don't know what will cause the darkening of the sky. Then he said, the people will be raining from the sky. And in one day, they're going to get control of this whole continent. And they're going to cut us up into four sections. And they're going to look for a leader that still remains, the native leader still remaining to the spiritual path. And to him, they will gather people here to him. And they will say, now these people, I gave them the religion and the duty to produce things, to invent things, and to become powerful people. When they came here, what have they been doing to you? Now, suppose he was the last chief still remaining in this area. They will ask him, and they will say, well, those people have destroyed my people. They have taken care of and taken uh, everything from my uh, people, land, rivers and uh, hunting rights and everything that I use, they just took it away from me against my uh, opposition. Then those that have done that, what we call purification, would be the real wicked people. People have taken advantage of them in that manner. These figures had no hate on them. That will be their supreme punishment. Because right in, in daylight, right in public, they're going to weed out those bad people and they're going to chop their heads off, they said. And that is what they said will happen. That's first punishment. Then they say, what about uh, these people here? And he will look at them and he said, well, at least they make an attempt to help us. They did try to do something for, to, to help us, protect us. And they will pull out all those people, they will know, you can't get away, they said, they'll have some means of catching you. And they will bring those people, there'll be a lot of those people. Then they will say, look, you have disturbed this land, life, these people, you have polluted their rivers and land and everything, now you go and clean it up. And whoever survives out of that will able to stay with the leader here. Then they say, what about these people? These people have really suffered, been persecuted and laughed at. They've been punished and they've been uh, beat up also because see, they really stood by me. And they will pull out those people and they will be brought to him and they will be respected. That is what they say will happen at this period by the people that has this symbol and man with red cap and red coat. They will come from each direction, from sun, where the sun rises, and they will come here quickly, and they will have something to paralyze all man-made machinery, everything come to a standstill. All power will go out, all man-made machinery will come to a standstill, <laughs> and we will be helpless when they just come and take it over. And this is what they will happen to by, by those people that coming from each direction. 
Now, if those people are commissioned by the Great Spirit to do that for the Great Spirit, if we can't clean it ourselves here, and if they fail, then the Great Spirit said there are other people coming from west direction. They'll be coming here for a long time. They're just taking this time slowly. They're coming and building up more power, more people, more invention, and all that, and they just kept coming. If these people doesn't come here to purify this for the Great Spirit, then this one will come. And they said, when that happened, don't get them on the housetop and watch, because those people are coming from the west direction. There'll be millions of people coming up on the west coast, like ants crawling up on the land. And they will have no mercy for anyone. They'll be very cruel and severe. They're not going to ask questions. They're just going to whip everything as they come. They're going looking for someone that will hold on to this spiritual path here. They're going to do that. This is what they said is going to happen. For these two purifiers on both sides are coming to this continent here where we started from. And we came back. We, we just about to destroy ourselves, mess it up. We can't straighten ourselves up. Then these purifiers will have to do it. This is what they said will happen here. So whoever comes out, then we will meet the Great Spirit. But if not, if no one listens, then these elders, religious men, will go down into the kiva, go through our ceremony, then they go over a prayer to four corners of this earth, to the above and to the below, and said, all right, none of these, ch my children, my people have listened to me or helped me. Now you take over. That's when the cloud will rise like this. Lightning will strike two or three times, all over this land. Like the old people said, if you have light power line in your house now, that power is going to run in and just blow up everything in there. And everything is going to happen when that lightning strikes. And so that's why some of these traditional people don't want power line into their village yet. They don't want to put it in the home. And then they also don't want running water inside of the house because that's going to be so polluted one of these days. And that's going to be affected in some way when a uh, white man or whoever has the power, that, like the goat uh, full of ashes, which you now would interpret to be a uh, hydrogen bomb or atom bomb or whatever bomb they have now invented so powerful, that once that hit someplace, it's going to pollute everything. So these are the things that are explained clearly. and. I can't really go into all that detail, but it, it brings up to date what we're facing today. I've seen many things happening along this line now that it's being fulfilled, so they told us, go as far as you can to explain some of these to as many people, because there is still a faith by our elders that someday our white brother somewhere or somebody is going to realize this or hear it and understand it, and they're going to search, and they're going to find out this is true. They're going to start going around to try and correct this before the fear for us come. So that is why whatever happening in our area, we don't want industries in there yet, because once that happens, those that's going to throw those uh, gourd full of ashes into this country, not in my hit all around us, but it's going to hit those places where we are developing those kind of things. And it also say that we must not disturb the spiritual center, just leave it alone, so that if anything happened outside of it, if some of you people survive, you, at least you can come to this area called a refuge for all mankind who survive those spirits, that, that this will not be uh, disturbed, so that there'll be a chance for some of, some of you people to come and leave there or to start from there again. So this is what old people's uh, instructions were and the prophecy and the warnings. And what they say, I, a lot of things I don't, uh, uh, at that time, don't believe, but many things have been fulfilled. And I know this old people, 80 or 90, 100 year old men, religious men, are talking these things. And it's, it's it in parallel to some of the world religious writers. And so I know they're telling the truth. So, this to the Hopi is a male, representing a male, 
and this was representing female. These two are the main sources of life that we must not disturb. We may start to interfere with it one of these days. Once we do that, then our life is down to a point where it will be lost forever. So we were not to do that. So these are some of the things that knowledge contained in, in the, the, the presentation that's given in 1948 in Chengopa village. So I believe this is about all I would give you on this, uh, this uh, knowledge here. Okay. Of course, in this land, Native people were, were taking care of this in their spiritual ways, song, ceremony, for thousands of years or more. When the white brother came, he don't know how to live on this land, so we gave him food and lodge and let him live here. But now, with their laws, rules, and regulations, they're just chopping up our land and life. Our cultural religion is about to be broken down. In Thousands of our people right now are homeless in their own country. It's the only home we have, only country we have. We have roots right here, but foreign people are about to take everything. So that's why the native people are concerned, because nature has already acted. Earthquake, flooding, tornadoes, and uh, maybe severe so winter this time, or something. Seasons change already. And that's the message that I'm bringing from the elders, that we must tell the people today to pick up the better corrects the things that's going on in this land that native people are holding this in, in their simple ways through prayer, meditation, and ceremony to keep this land life in balance as much as possible. But that is about to be broken down. But no one seems to want to do anything about it. They don't think about what they're doing to the native people's land, their home in the home country. We talk about peace and justice, equality, the United States law. United Nations talk of human rights, but they haven't done anything since they set our land, set, set their building on our land, talking about human rights, equality, but native people are about to be destroyed right now. That's what the message is all about. So you people better hurry up, get to your leaders and stop some of the laws that destroying our cultural, religion, and way of life, take our land away from us by force, right up in Big Mountain. Navajo people don't want to move because They've been there for a long, long time, and we take care of this land together with Hopi and, and other pueblos for a long time. Then government passed a law says that we've got to put barbed wire in between them. We must divide them, and now they're going to relocate Navajo, thousands of Navajos from that big mountain because the law says so. They can move on because the law said this is Hopi land, and then this one's the Navajo land. And the Hopi were caught, the Hopi were caught in there, they move them out by force. And then Navajo people don't want to move. Right now, just two, two three days ago, they had a meeting, they're not going to move. They said if the uh, National Guards come out and drag them out, they're not going to move. If they're going to shoot them down, they would have died right there being shot by Macan people. That's what's going on right now. But your people don't aware of what's going on in this country. This is terrible. United Nations, December 10th, and they want me to speak, so I was the 20th speaker. And it was late, but I was, had to deliver it by, by word of mouth. I had a letter to de deliver, but from the heart I know what, what's in there, what my leader says. So on December 10th, they hear a lot of Native people from all over Western Hemisphere. And I was the last speaker, I was the 20th one. Right in the middle of my talk, 90 mile, mile an hour wind came, almost knocked the United Nations over. The terrible storm developed. Tidal wave never happened like that before. Two or three feet of water on New Jersey. Blackout, lightning and thunder. There was snow on the north of the island there. But right in the United Nations, it's within that area where native people are, it rained, but it was protected. So the next morning, we formed a circle and went through a prayer ceremony and asked the forces from four directions above, below, to stop those kind of terrible things so that it would be a nice day so that our native people go back safely home. By noon, the sun came up, everything comes, become calm, 
airplanes moving, everything starts moving on natural way. So that is the last delivered by my Hopi people. So now they finally sent a letter just a week ago that they will let four spiritual letters from east, west, north, and south with the Hopi to bring that message to the United Nations that ancient knowledge, prophecy, and warning that's been known for them long time ago, they're going to deliver to the United Nations because they represent many nations around the earth. So they want to find out who is going to help the native people in this country. When the white people came, we gave them food and lodging, and food and everything. We welcomed them. But now we are about to be destroyed by them. So now we need to know who's going to bring about justice, peace, equality, human rights to the native people. Well, we all know that we as human beings are the uh, uh, part of this earth. And we're always working on Mother Earth all the time, looking for food. And Mother Earth continues to give food of everything. We all came from, everything came from them. That's why we refer to this earth as a great, powerful living being. It's like a mother. And so those land that was being stripped with uh, machinery, uh, uh, trees, you know, be chopping trees, thousands of trees be chopped down in a few seconds now. Then they go coal, uranium, other minerals in the ground, and that disturbing Nat and natural uh, natures uh, and balancing on nature so that we are going to be affected by it. And that is why the Hopi found that many native people as well as other uh, people here, they supposed to have education. They got a lot of books to learn from. They go to college, university and talk about these things. They should understand now what they're doing to this Mother Earth. And so in that area, as I say, is considered to be a spiritual center. So m most people will realize that it's true. They may form a human chain around the Four Corners area and stop everything there, pull out all the things that endangers people's land and life, or don't let anyone go in there again to disturb. We should keep this Four Corners area in balance and just leave it the way it is, the way the Great Spirit made it. It may be that that whoever helped protect it will be able to survive because that's the only way we're going to survive as we're going towards the most dangerous period now. If we don't correct changes thing to, to, to their survival, it's a very important thing. You know, when Oxford University in 1988, there was 100 spiritual leaders, Dalai Lama, so there are 100 spiritual leaders and 100 parliamentarians. They have a big globe on the stage and, and underneath it global survival, and they were asking questions. This world is in trouble. We live in one, one world, but what shall we do? And the Hopi means peace, kind, gentle, truthful, humble person, and I represent those people, and I'm a Hopi, and I have been initiated in society, Kachina society, and I know what they're talking about. So when the Second World War, I didn't register. I refused to go in the army because we have no business going out. And the United States government has no business forcing us in there without permission. And so I didn't go and and I think I'm almost seven years I spent in federal prison camp right up here on this mountain, Mount Lemon. They were building a road up to the top of the mountain. I spent almost seven years up there trying to be peaceful Hopi, not to harm, kill or destroy any people. The way for us people is to uh, get her well, is to go back to the spiritual way and live according to the Great Spirit's uh, life plan. Because he had given certain group of people certain instructions to follow, uh, certain instructions to uh, how to uh, uh, how to pray and all that. But it seems though that uh, all over the all over this land, the people had forgotten uh, the teachings of the Great Spirit, and they have gone away from it. Now we're all confused. Our life is corrupted again. We must go back to the spiritual road and leave according to his instructions. 
uh, talking to you people here, uh, this is not a this is not a political issue. This is a spiritual level that we are talking. Hey,